Hi, I'm Kevin Eichhorst. I'm a senior solution architect with Digi's Wireless Design Services Division. At Digi, we believe in the connected world. Out there, there are millions of great ideas that just need to get connected. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to help. So whether you are looking to make that make versus buy decision that says, hey, should I outsource an entire design? Should I go it alone and maybe get some additional help? Those are the kinds of services that we provide. We can do everything from concept to manufacturing. Along that, we will bring in our teams, like our electrical engineering team, software, firmware, mechanical, manufacturing test to be able to get you from that concept to manufacturing. If you decide not to go that route and you go your own uh, design route, we can provide services there as well. Some of the value added services that we can give you are analysis of your design. So let's look at places where you aren't necessarily following best practice. There are some improvements that you could do in your design, places where you, know, you could uh, eliminate possibilities for noise. Things would cause you to fail your uh, certifications. One of the problems that we see is that 80% of new designs that go through certification fail on the first time. So being aware of that you know, allows you to make good decisions up front. One of the products that we worked with, a client, uh, had this nice solar powered trash compactor that has a cellular device in it that allows it to connect to the network and report out, I'm full, I need service. And at that point in time, somebody can come and empty it without having to make you know, those daily, weekly trips, whatever it is, to find an empty trash can. So it allow them to save operational expenses, you know, fuel, uh, employee time, those kinds of things. But the problem they were having is they were failing certifications, and in particular, they were failing the radiated spurious emissions. So what we did is we took their device, we put it in an anechoic chamber, we hook up a call box that allows us to run the same RSE tests, so drive the device as if it was on the cellular network, we bring in a spectrum analyzer and we look at you know, the emissions, the noise, what are the signal levels that are going on as those tests are being performed. Then we can look at those against you know, what are the acceptable levels and find out you know, where are they missing and by how much. Further then, we can look at the, use the spectrum analyzer to analyze where on the device are those emissions emanating from. And then look at a correction plan. What we typically then do is we'll take the schematics and the layout for the device and we'll look and say, okay, based on best practices, where are things that we can improve, you know, either things in the design, in the schematic itself, or in the implementation, the layout. You know, are there things like antenna lines or too close to power nets, those kinds of things. And then be able to give those recommendations. In particular, for the RSE tests that we were seeing uh, fail, the power supply, they had a switching power supply that they were using to drive both the cell modem and then everything else on the board, the micro and, and all those kinds of things. One of the th improvements that we were able to tell them is that what we wanted to do is add in an LDO a low dropout linear regulator that would then filter that noise coming from the power supply over the cell modem. Because in the intended radiations piece of the test where the unit is actually transmitting, signals were being picked up by the power supply and then pushed back through the power system causing the cell modem then to transmit you know, in a, in a non-compliant um, non compliant manner. Beyond that, then we give them other recommendations. I mean, this is probably one of the largest ones, but we give them other recommendations, like where should you add capacitance to filter out you know, potential noise uh, sources? How should you do the layout? So things like ground pores uh, around signal lines, uh, proper you know, stitching vias to be able to create essentially a Faraday cage on the board to keep outside signals from, from entering in. Those are the kinds of recommendations that we give them and then they can take those back, implement them in a design, and then go back through certification. And in this case, they implemented the changes, and on the next iteration, they were able to pass their certification. Now, if you choose to go the route where you talk to Digi and say, hey, we'd like you to do the entire design, 
uh, from start to finish, then what we do is we provide you a 100% guarantee that you'll pass your certifications the first time. So you can ask yourself, do you want to go it alone and perhaps end up in this 80% category, or would you rather go the much safer route and end up in that 100% category, get your certifications and launch your product? Because again, we have a wide variety of services that we can provide depending on which route you take, that make versus buy, but always remember that Digi's here to help.